Are we live? Are we, are we live? You started it when? Okay, hang on. <clears throat> Good evening, wrestling fans from the world famous AWL Arena in Tokyo, Japan. This is the Animated Wrestling League. Oh, Bonanza 2019. And we're supposed to have started off in the Joshi Tag Team Division as the augments of Dr. Jigoku face Monster Union's Unholy Alliance in two on two action. One, two, no reversal. One, two, no, two counts, says senior official Joey Babaganoot of the famous Babaganoot wrestling family. These duos apparently were fighting all through the back of the arena and they've, they've just made it out to the, uh, to, to the ring a couple of minutes ago. The AWL commissioner's office has announced that the match officially started when contact was made in the ring, but we didn't have the we didn't have the the, the cameras and everything set up. So this match has been going for about 10 minutes already. I do apologize, ladies and gentlemen. Major technical error here, but uh, we are. I, hopefully, you're hearing this. We are live. This is Obon Nanza. We begin with the women. We're going to end with the women as well in our main event tonight. The Joshi Championship will be defended for the ninth time by the undefeated Akira Merene. She faces her best friend and tag team partner, Doragones. And I don't know what the X-Drone was thinking up there, but that didn't work. The, the lethal lycanthrope. Wild thing with a sidewalk slam. The hooded managers in, in, uh, in presence, I should say. Oh! Wild Thing smashing the head of the robot into the ground. The robot that I believe is, is imitating Wild Thing. And I know she's going to take that personally. Wild Thing looking for a finishing maneuver. He saw Tsuwaza. The Lycanthra Bomb! Lycanthra Bomb! That somehow does not hold her for the pinfall. That couple of seconds difference could be the difference between victory and defeat. And Dr. Jigoku getting involved now. And I'd be remiss if I didn't remind you that the diabolical Dr. Jigoku, the mad scientist of professional wrestling, he has that golden opportunity in his back pocket that he can use to make any match he likes. Or any title he likes, but he can only use that once. Running down the rest of the card tonight, it's all about contendership. We're going to have a fight for four, with the winner advancing to a reshuffle match tonight. The winner of that four-way reshuffle match will challenge for the AWL Grand Championship at our season premiere, AWL 281. We will also have an eight-man scramble match, with the winner getting a shot at Matt Classic Senior and the AWL Intercontinental Championship, and Wild Thing trying to bite through that helmet of Kuroshi Machine, and a spear right to the stomach, or whatever she has. I believe Kuroshi Machine also a robotic individual, a full gynoid, not a cyborg. At least not anymore. And the stomach and a shot right to the back of the knee in a human there would be a cluster of nerves behind the knee that would take the Russian machine down, but it's right in the name. She's not human. Both of these competitors looking to earn three points so that they can challenge for the Joshi Tag Team titles currently held by both halves of our main event this evening. Big DDT! And again, Dr. Jigoku getting involved, trying to distract senior official Joey Babaganoush the biggest Bobby Gnose wrestling family as we go for the Pentagon arm breaker. The rapid healing ability and the super strength of the lycanthrope should help her there. Should help her survive without a broken arm. 90 seconds left, le closer to 80 seconds left on the clock in this match. In the event of a time limit draw, it's a push, no points awarded, none lost. Deadlift power bomb, sit out style by the impressive crochet machine. And I think Wild Thing may have done some damage to the helmet of Kuroshi Machine with that bite. Kuroshi forced to tag x -drone. One minute on the clock, 60 seconds. Rest 
wrestlers are aware of the time limit. There are clocks stationed about the ring. And what do we have here? 45 seconds. Neko Musume looking for a tag. I don't think he's going to get it. I don't think there's time for it, to be quite honest with you. One, two, three, four, five, six. That's the wrestle. That's your wrestle maps for the. Uh, does anybody remember New Generation podcast? Anyway, Irish whip into the corner. Tag Kogeki coming to tonight. Tag made. And what are they going to do? Looks like it'll be another shot at that arm. That's pretty smart. You take away the arm. Take away the like counter bomb. Military press and just drops her into a moonsault. Cover one. Two, three, wait, what? what? Not just a rule, they limit well, that sucks. There will be a rematch, probably at AWL 281. All right, sorry for that rough start, ladies and gentlemen. Let's get on with our summer super car. The following contest is scheduled for one call, and it is a fight for four. Introducing first, representing and accompanied by Nikon Yodbata, Liger. If, ladies and gentlemen, you are joining us for the very first time, thank you for watching the Animated Wrestling League. That is not Jushin Thunder Liger. That is a fraud a fake, an imposter, a charlatan, a con artist who has conned Nippon Yokata, the Japanese nationalist stable, into thinking he is their senpai while they're about to be faced with a little bit of reality. And his opponent, accompanied by the real Jushin Sanjara! Running out of the center of the sun, Eruption Solar! Eruption Solar, Solar Flare in Spanish. A young, high flying luchador who idolizes the true Jushin Sandaraiga, who has come to the AWL as his mentor. Which has got to be a dream come true. You can see the real Liger in the background there. Last time these two fought, Erupsi and Solar took the Intercontinental title off of the fake Liger. Ten minutes on the clock in this one-on-one -on -one contest. This is a fight for four. In the Animated Wrestling League, we use a best four system to determine challengers for our grand championship, our top title. And a fight for four means that the winner of that match will join the best four. Four. And if you are the number one contender in the best four, then that makes you the number one contender for the AWL Grand Championship. The next title defense is scheduled for our season premiere in, in uh, late August with the AWL Grand Champion Aztec Kaiser Neo defending against, we don't know yet. We will find out later tonight. The winner of this match will enter a four-way elimination bout later this evening. Yes, they will have to wrestle twice, but if they win, if they move from four to one in that reshuffle match, they will become the number one contender. Win this match, win the four-way eliminator, and you challenge for the grand championship at AWL 281. That's the stake of this match. Those are the stakes, I should say. Be more grammatically correct. Across the across the rope, the hot shot, the fake Liger into the cover, but does not even get a one count from senior official Joey Baba Ganoush of the famous Baba Ganoush wrestling family. And ladies and gentlemen, if you don't know who the Baba Ganouches are, well, let's just say you don't know anything about pro wrestling, do you? And it's yep, yep, the Romero special, the Romero special signature submission maneuver, and a great counter up to his feet by Eruption Solar. Must have been taught how to do that by the true Jushin Liger. And there you see the two Ligers right next to each other, the true Jushin Sandaraiga in the red and white, realizing he cannot get physically involved in this match. 
Otherwise, his man, Eruption Solar, will be disqualified. And since we're on the outside, again, if you're joining us for the very first time, thank you for watching. Please like, share, subscribe, enable notifications, do all that YouTube stuff. But I should remind you, Japanese wrestling rules apply. That means a 20 count on the outside. Backdrop by Liga. And I mean Liger. In the event of a time limit draw, both of these individuals will be eliminated and will not be allowed to enter the... Uh-oh. The fake Liger going to fly, I think. Off of the ropes, still a junior heavyweight. Kope Suicida. Straight through the white, red, and white ropes, the colors of the Japanese flag. Seven minutes remain. If we go to a time limit draw, they're both out, and we'll have a three-way eliminator match tonight to determine the number one contender. Fake Liger basking in the boos of the fans here. We'll see Hasaiki in the mask, a very tall individual. Kobayashi, with a Kyojin Kobayashi. And off to the right, can't quite see him that from, your, from your viewpoint right now. That is the Prince of the Pinfall, Hifni Yuji. The leader of Nippon Yokata, Yamada Jiro, will be in that Intercontinental Scramble match later tonight. Second time in the Romero Special, can he, a uh, less smooth escape. That was more the fake Liger, unable to maintain his balance. Cover for the one, two, but a hard kick out with some authority from Eruption Solar. Liger Bomb attempt, is he gonna get it? Yes he does, spinning Liger Bomb, but a kick out somehow. Eh, the copy's never as good as the original, is it? Fake Liger now going for a little uh, mat technique, a little mat wrestling here. Nothing wrong with that. Cover for the one, two, kick out. Also coming up later tonight, we have the debut of a brand new stable of professional wrestlers. Uh, if you've been reading our blog, awlwrestling.blogspot.com, you know what's going on there. We'll get to it when we get to it. We also have a very special guest star from New Japan Pro Wrestling, the Rainmaker, the IWGP Heavyweight Champion. Wait a minute! Supernova! He's Satsuaza! One, two... Kick out of the Supernova. That's the move he used to win the Intercontinental Championship. Did it up, Sian Solar. Now he's going to go round the world with the Powerbomb. Okada Kazuchika, the Rainmaker, will team with Tiger Mask 2 in a tag team match against the Empire later tonight. With the winner getting a future tag team title shot against the Spirit Pack. That's going to be an intense match. And of course, in our main event, the Joshi Championship on the line covers the one. No, only a one count. And we're more than halfway through the time limit. Four minutes remaining approximately on the clock. German with a bridge. One, two. And again, it up Cien Salar manages to reach down deep, find that fighting spirit, kick out. And he's got the energy he needs. He's going to try to fly high up to the high rent district. High risk, no reward. Elbow drop from the top. He's nothing but canvas. Three minutes, 30 seconds remaining over the top rope. You can't, you cannot pin him in the ring, Liger. You idiot. Oh, but you can do a lot of damage. The fake Liger on the top strand himself. Oh, no, he missed! He missed! Solar able to get out of the way at the last... Okay, uh, I'm ready to run away now. And here we see the Prince of the Pinfall getting uncomfortably close. Hifumi Ryuji coming around here. Hey, oi! Can you get out? Get out of here! Rokkanekaiste! Less than three minutes. And now you see Hasaiki, the... 
the Japanese crusher with a perfect distraction. The fake like were able to take advantage. Oh, wait a minute. No, 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 he says. But Liger quickly retakes control. Yep, going on 2 222 here. Power bomb up. Liger bomb. One, two, damn it. The fake Liger advances to the reshuffle match. You see that Tope Suicida. Credit were due, that was impressive. And the Liger Bomb. Here's the winner and the new number four contender in the AWF Best War, Liger. Later tonight, Liger has the opportunity to become the number one contender to the Grand Championship. But right now, we're gonna take a look for another number one contender. And if you are joining us for the very first time, be prepared to be introduced to a whole lot of very interesting individuals. The AWL Arena sold out tonight. For Oban Nanzar, summer supercard. We're already into our third match tonight, ladies and gentlemen. The eerie sounds of Monster Union. The following contest is an eight-man scramble match, scheduled for seven falls. The winner shall be declared the number one contender to the animated wrestling league in the Continental Championship. Introducing first, making his win the ring, representing Monster Union, and the Serpentine Sensation, Heavy Sky! Monster Union, the stable of the not quite human. The first ever member, the founding member of Monster Union, Hebitsky, with a huge opportunity. If he can run the gauntlet, outlast seven other wrestlers, he will have a shot at the Intercontinental Championship, the contender's title. Five successful Intercontinental title defenses, and you earn an automatic shot at the Grand Championship. It's all about the Grand Championship here in the AWL. Making his from the unified school of the Tiger style, Black Tiger Justice. Black Tiger Justice, the young man, the youngest member actually of the Tiger Stable, the unified school of the Tiger style. The man who looks to bring honor and glory back to the name of the Black Tiger. Definite fan favorite, former AWO World Tag Team Champion as well. Packed house tonight here in Tokyo. And the fact that we've got fully functioning air conditioning has a lot to do with it. That is right, ladies and gentlemen, the master of motion himself, one half alongside his partner, Airwolf. One half of the world's tag team titles, they took those titles off. Uh, Black Tiger Justice and his partner, Sheen Tiger Jr. But this is not about tag team titles tonight. This is about individual accomplishment, singles action. 
we call him the spirit dragon. And if you've never seen the master of motion, the spirit dragon, you're in for a treat. I hate this part. Introducing next, representing the Dore fighting out of the laboratory, DB02. Do you hear that? Those ominous words echoing throughout the AWL arena. Subite, Jigoku Hakase no Tamini, all for Dr. Jigoku, the man once known as the Doom Bunny. Now a servant, a puppet, a slave to the diabolical Dr. Jigoku. You see that glowing red control mask over his face. Formerly one of our greatest junior heavyweight heroes, a former AWL World's Tag Team Champion, former AWL uh, Light Heavyweight Champion back when we had weight divisions here in the AWL. And now just, you can see him even trying to fight the mask, trying to fight the control for a brief moment. But no, he's just one of Dr. Jigoku's minions. You'll see another of his ilk later this evening. All for Dr. Jigoku, that's what he is now. A tool, a puppet, a minion. Fighting out of Kyoto, Japan! Representing me for your hostiles, the self-proclaimed pure spiritual guru, Yamada Jiro. Yamada Jiro is quite frankly a racist. He hates all gaijin, feels that they should not be allowed in Japan, they should be sent back where they came from, and they certainly shouldn't be allowed to set foot in the ring with what he believes to be the last Japanese man, the last true Japanese man, Yamada Jiro. Same stable as the fake Liger and all his minions you saw earlier. Let's get some hero action out here. Fighting out of the secret base, representing Bruce and Tai, the Wrestle Black! Wrestle Black, a member of a five individual team, a five person team, the Puro Sentai, Wrestle Ninja, our very own pro wrestling Sentai team, here to defend the AWL from invaders, outsiders, and monsters. Wrestle Black, by far the largest member of that team, the giant, the powerhouse of the Puro Sentai Reserenja. Introducing next, fighting out of Yokohama, Japan, the Scion of Shiva Kagi, the only individual in this match, the only competitor in this match who actually have won the Intercontinental Championship in the past, successfully defended it five times, cashed it in to become AWL Grand Champion. Now he's looking to repeat that incredible feat. He's got a tough road to home, not the least of which being this man. And finally, making 
Rangers would bring from the tales of Sinbad. Oh! The rookie sensation of season 14 looks to start off season 15 with an opportunity to become Intercontinental Champion. And if you've never seen The Rock in action, ignore what you're looking at right now. Ignore the garish outfit. Ignore that headdress. Realize that you're about to see the definition of a young stud professional wrestler. The Rock, I assure you, is far more than what he sees. A sold out AWL Arena on their feet. There's going to be seven falls to this match. The last man standing will be the number one contender for the Intercontinental title. The road less taken to the Grand Championship starts right here at O Bonanza. Fifteen seasons we have been going. AWL 300 will be the season finale in December of 2019. Where we go from there? Nobody knows. And a very crowded ring as we start off with 15 minutes on the clock. Just pay attention, ladies and gentlemen. I'm not going to be able to call every move that happens here until we win a sort of, you know, whittle our way down. But it looks like uh, Spirit Dragon Shenron and Wrestle Black wrestling each other. The Rock going after Chiba Akagi in the middle of the ring. Uh, DB02 and Black Tiger Justice, as well as Hebit Sky and the leader of Nippon Yokata. One thing I will point out do not expect wrestlers to be breaking up pinning combinations here because it is every man for themselves. Everybody has a desire. Everybody has a reason to let the other guys get in. I should also point out that the AWL win-loss records are absolutely in effect as Nippon Yokata's Yamada Jiro goes up. Double moonsault from Black Tiger. Justice Huge over the top rope, off the top rope. Maneuver by Yamada Jiro. That's not his usual style. He's less king of the road and more uh, more strong style in his usual attitude. Vertical suplex by Yamada Jiro as Shenron, the one half of the tag team champion, tries to chop down the Sequoia that is Wrestle Black. Black Tiger Buster! Double underhook cut buster, Black Tiger Buster by Black Tiger. And a couple of pinfalls here. One, two, no. One, two, three. DB02 has been eliminated. And now is when things get dangerous because there's an uneven number of competitors. A two count there on Hibit Sky from Yamada Jiro. In the event we get to a time limit draw, nobody will challenge for the title. We're looking at a potential of three championship matches at AWL 281, the season 15 premiere, coming up next month. I believe I said I don't know I don't know the exact date, but it'll be late this month, early next month. Two count, one. Two kickouts by both members of the block. Springboard snake bite. Snake bite by Habit Sky. Yamada Jiro officially in trouble. 12 minutes and change on the clock. The strength and power of Russell Black. A rock of the spine buster. He's going for something. Hitobito no. Moonsarito. The people's moonsault. 
One, two, no. Submit, double submission, double limb submission by the Scion of Submission, who is not in his element tonight. Submission, uh-oh, Goozle, choke, slam by Russell Black. The Hibby Sky. Cross leg crab by the former AWL Grand Champion. Cover for the one, two, Senior official Joey Bobby News from the famous Bobby News Wrestling Family having trouble. Boom! Crow crash! Oh, and the referee goes down. It's martial law, ladies and gentlemen. Shenron defying the laws of physics. It is pandemonium gone wild. In the AWL ring, eight man scramble action. We've only had one elimination. That's Dr. Jagoshi's DB02. And now it is getting crazy in here. Off wrist lock by the tag team champion. Submission attempt, but there's no referee to acknowledge it by Shiba Akagi. Referee getting back to his feet, finally surveys the damage. Shenron going for something, I'm not sure what here. A uh, choke slam on the rock by Russell Black. And a funk like co hold by Chiba Akagi to Hibitsky. I'm at a zero right now, sitting back to watch the damage. Running star press. You know, almost a Gordian knot. Hang on a second, cover here. One, two, three. That's it, Beats Guys out. Heavy Sky has been eliminated. We're back down to an even number. Dragon Twist. Cover one, two, no. Russell Black kicks out. The corpse of Evite Sky still laying motionless in the ring. Tiger Bomb! And back to that double limb submission. <clears throat> like three quarters of a Chikara special upside down. Nine minutes remain. Six wrestlers still in the match. Hurricane Rana and Yamada Jiro. In big trouble, Tiger faint kick! Tiger and Dragon up combination there. Shenron and Airwolf have a storied relationship with the unified school of the Tiger style. Shenron must have picked up that Tiger's faint kick from probably Black Tiger just as with a, with a double strike moonsault. No escape moonsault. DDT tornado style. Black Tiger Buster. And that's it. The little man takes out the big man. We're down to five. Back to the uneven number. Black. Ti no, Black Tiger Buster interrupted as Yamada Jiro tries to steal a pin. Black Tiger just doesn't seem to care. Shenron has been eliminated. There is one less competitor in the ring. And now the Rock is probably in the submission hold here, but wait a minute. One, two, Shades of Antonio Inoki. Black Tiger Justice. Oh, ah, that scumbag. First he steals a pin and he sneaks up behind his opponent. The quick victory. And The Rock with a neck breaker allowing. No. We are down to three. The Rock, Yamada Jiro, and Chiba Akagi. And a double team maneuver. Nobody likes Yamada Jiro. What can I say? To a nicer guy, it wouldn't happen. 
Minajiro in the corner, the Rock under control here. Oh, but now it's Steve Akagi getting involved. Nobody, nobody letting anybody do anything. They've only got six and a half minutes to end this contest. Steve Akagi gets out of a bad situation there on the top rope. Something has got to give in this three-way stalemate. And The Rock escapes. The Rock bottom! Rock bottom to Yamada Jiro. Chiba Akagi recovering in the corner. One, two, and then there were two. Yamada Jiro has been eliminated. Backdrop driver. Shades of Takeshimoto Shima. Right hand by The Rock, a rookie sensation. Versus the cream of the 2015 class of Dojo graduates. 2015 class versus class of 2019. Five and a half minutes remain. It's gonna be submission versus power. Almost strong style versus <laughs> sports entertainment. Five minutes and change, plenty of time with only two combatants left in the ring. Neck breaker, but he holds on. Maintains wrist control, transitions. Into a choke hold and that's it. A legal choke, ladies and gentlemen. And the referee calls it Chiba Akagi for the opportunity to travel the road. Here's the winner and the number one contender. Congratulations to the Scion of Submission. Excellent start to Season 15. You like elimination matches? Well, let's have another one. This time only four wrestlers in the ring, but the prize, a shot at the biggest title in animated wrestling. No managers, no cornermen, and no mad scientists permitted at ringside for a reshuffle match. They will enter in numerical order. The loser of the first fall will be the number four contender. The loser of the second fall, number three. The loser of the third final fall, number two. The winner, the number one contender. The following contest is a reshuffle match. Scheduled for three balls. Introducing first is the current number one contender in the AWL Best Ball. Fighting over for the ball for the representing the All Commanders. Her Roger Tetsu. Two point oh. One of two former AWL Grand Champions who will be competing in this match. Dr. Jigoku's most successful experiment is without a doubt the Iron Project, Project Tetsu. The last thing the AWL can stand is for Dr. Jigoku to recontain, regain control, I should say of the AWL Grand Championship, but if the Iron Project, Project Tetsu, survives this match, comes out on top, that's exactly what is going to happen at AWL 281. Because I think this guy can take Aztec Kaiser Neo, even with the star of Aztec in play. And I hate this part. Ugh. Yeah, you pay extra for front row ticket and you get set on fire. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Jigoku has not one, but two of his creations in this match. The Cyborg, the Iron Project, Project Tetsu, and Easily the best wrestler 
of his slave form, Dore form, as it's called in Japanese. Introducing next, representing the Dore form, also fighting out the laboratory. He is the current number two contender in the AWL Test Four. H zero three. H zero three. Better known, or formerly known, I should say, as Hakaisha, the twelfth AWL Grand Champion. Project Tetsu, the sixth Grand Champion in AWL history. I should also point out, Aztec Kaiser Neo, the reigning champion, the 19th Grand Champion. Going back to the stats here, Hakaisha, during his title reign, four successful title defenses. However, Project Tetsu, five successful title defenses, currently tied for the record of title defenses of that belt. Tied, I should regretfully point out, with Tanaka Kenichi of all people. And now, the first of two contenders to have never held the Grand Championship. And the number three contender in the NWL Best Four, fighting out of the secret base. He is the leader of the Procentai Resumenda, Resumento. The leader of the hero team, trying to make up for a very big mistake. Once upon a time, Wrestle Red had a golden opportunity around his neck. He chose to wager that in a lucha de apuestas and lost it to the forces of Dr. Jigoku. Now he's hoping that by, that by becoming Grand Champion, he can protect the AWL from the forces of evil. I genuinely don't know if he can do it. And here comes the fraud. And finally, the number four contender in the AWL Best Four, Liger! One thing I have not talked about much this evening are the win-loss records here in the AWL. These are vitally important. They determine contendership opportunities. They, can they determine tournament entry. They determine everything. The fake Liger, after his victory early tonight, a record of 17 and 9 for a record for a ratio, win-loss ratio of plus 8. H03 plus 48, record of 89 and 41. Project Tetsu, 49 and 30, record of plus 19. Wrestle Red, 9 and 5, plus 4. Everybody on the plus side of the scale as we begin and naturally the hero takes on the biggest monster in the group 15 minutes on the clock in the event of the time limit draw any changes of the ranking that have taken place will remain but everybody left in the ring will I will maintain their current rank so right now the number one contender is project tetsu He's got literally nothing to lose. Okay, sorry, he's got everything to lose, I should say. Completely screwed that up, leaving it in. And this is what I did, I, I kind of expected to see, because the, the orders for the, the control masks are not very sophisticated, in my opinion. And H03 has been instructed to win this match. Dr. Goku very much believes in survival of the fittest. If his Iron Project is going to beat Aztec Kaiser Neo, he needs to be able to beat the strongest member of the Dure Corps on the way to get there. And 
yes, that's not how survival of it is, how survival of the best adapted actually works, but Dr. Jagoku's a mad scientist. You can't expect him to always make sense. And unfortunately, getting very close to the commentation station here, and I am very much uh, ready to run away if necessary. I will be over that barricade and out the building before you can blink. I should point out, no countouts in a reshuffle match. We want pinfalls or submissions, but of course those can only take place inside the AWL ring. The fake Liger at the obvious disadvantage here, having already wrestled once this evening, and that was only about half an hour ago. So not a lot of time to recuperate. Oh! Full Nelson slam by Project Tetsu. Oh, interesting timing. The fake Liger, credit where due, taking out two opponents with one drop kick. That was absolutely pitch perfect timing. More chaos, more pandemonium. You get this many wrestlers in the ring at once. All multi-man matches in the Animated Wrestling League are elimination rules. Only three minutes into this spine buster by Wrestle Red, and nobody's communicating here. Nobody's willing to let anybody else take the lead. All these A-type personalities, including the, the guy under mind control, somehow. Here we go, Isatsuaza, Akadrop for the cover. One, two, three, no. Two, only two, says the referee. Underhook DDT by the fake Liger, looking for the Liger Bomb or possibly the Brain Buster. No, he's looking Liger Bomb. Isatsuaza, Liger Bomb. One, two. An opportunity at the Animated Wrestling League Grand Championship is at stake. I think I'm seeing the real personality of Akaisha coming out here. He does not like Project Tetsu, but he will fight to win. Subite, Jigoku Hakusei no Tamini, all for Dr. Jigoku. Uh -oh. Power bomb. Oh! I think the head of the fake Liger just bounced off of the apron. Hardest part of the ring, as we all well know now. And that, and yeah, and the, the helmet of Wrestle Red not going to provide that much protection. As these two hits the steel superstructure. German suplex on the outside to Project Tetsu. Boom! Wasteland. Ten minutes remain. Five minutes. Five minutes past. Go from there. Go from there. Yeah, we don't actually do that. I just occasionally throw it in when it's funny. German, you're going for the hat. In AWL, we call this the hat trick suplex. Subtype. German. Boom. Liger down and out in the middle of the ring. The hero and the cyborg. Fighting on the outside, clear opportunity for H03. One, two, three, finally an elimination. Liger has been eliminated. That will bring him down to a plus seven ratio. Oh, he saw two other, no! That wasn't he saw two other, actually, that was even a choke slam. Liger will maintain his number four ranking. A complete failure in this match, but he is in line for an eventual title opportunity. Deadlift, wheelbarrow, slam! And what is this submission? Yeah, abandons that as he's getting kicked in the back by H03. One hero and two monsters. Only a two count on that one. Eight and a half remaining. 
the hat trick suplex once again. Subtype. Jernemann. And first your inevitable betrayal. The heroes, the monsters turn up. I look at that, the accordion, back, the Argentine backbreaker. That was the only submission ever regularly used. And a submission, a tap out. Project Tetsu has been eliminated. Project Tetsu tumbles from number one to number three. And we are down to two. Hero and brainwashed zombie wrestler. I love the AWL. Going for another wasteland. Into the backsplash. Lateral press, no hook of the leg. One, two. Barely a two count, but it is a two, says the referee. And Project Tetsu can't believe what he's seeing here. Both of these men very much in the same vein in their wrestling styles. Pick him up, put him down, make it hurt. That's been a Kaisha H03's philosophy ever since season two when he debuted here in the Animated Wrestling League. Up. Down, gut, knee, gut buster, knee right to his stomach. Presuming, of course, he still has one. And shot right to the back of the head. Tatsumaki, Isatsuaza, the Tatsumaki. Call it a tornado in Japanese. Tatsumaki, referee checking the shoulders. One, two. Three, and that is it. All for Dr. Jigoku. Here is your winner and the new number one contender in the AWL Best Ball. That's the former H rankings. And there you see the update, H03, the number one contender. He will challenge Aztec Kaiser Neo for the Grand Championship at AWL 281. But we continue now with an interpromotional match. The Animated Wrestling League versus Chikara. And if you've been following the AWL blog at awlwrestling.blogspot.com, you'll know that this new international stable brought together by Hassan, known as Sekai Good. The World Army. And there they are, four fighters strong. The following contest is an eight-man Atomicos match, scheduled for one fall. Introducing first, the quartet of the Arab American Dream, Hassan, the most Canadian man in the world, in Canada, the shining legacy, El Hio de Magiku, and Australian Dynamite, Michael Dunn. Together they are Sekaiku. The United States of America, Canada, Australia and Mexico. Some of the greatest wrestlers from these four nations brought together as one. The World Army Sekai Good. And they will face their first challenge in this four on four, one fall to a finish, a Tomoko match. And they face a golden trio plus a legend. And their opponent representing Kikora. The trio combination of Icarus, the golden grappler, Travis Huckabee. And Tony Steffen, together they are, Chicago's most dangerous trio. This! Do not let the small stature of Tony Deppin 
and Travis Huckabee distract you. They are incredibly skilled. Matt Wrestler, the Golden Grappler. Travis Huckabee, winner of the most recent Johnny Kid Invitational Tournament, as a matter of fact. And of course, Icarus, a former Chikara Grand Champion. Among many other accolades, and they'll be teaming. Yeah, don't cheer. Don't cheer this guy. And their partner, he is the reigning and defending Chicago oh, he isn't. Grand Champion, the old timey King of Swing, Dasher Hat. Uh, I should point out Dasher not defending the title tonight as nobody in the ring has three points under the Chikara system. A bit of an error by our announcer there. But as you can see, the white mask tainted with gold fever. He's now in a position he places that belt over even his own family. It's going to be the team captains. Starting us off as Hassan, the leader of Sekai Gun, faces the undisputed leader of Fist. Only one team, one member of each team, legal in the ring at a time. It's a multi-man match, tag team trios, comicos, etc. So we do have a 15-minute time limit. Quick submission opportunity here, broken out of fairly easily by uh, the Arab American Dream. Coming up next, we've got our semi-final match of the evening. It's going to be a tag team affair. Okada and Tiger Mask versus the Empire. And then, of course, in the main event, the Joshi Championship will be on the line as Akira Merine, the undefeated Mistress of a Thousand Holds, defends for the third time against her friend, Dragoness. Strategy is going to be so important in this four-way, sorry, this four-on-four four four match. And that's right, cut the, oh, wait a minute, tag made, in comes... Kid Canada. I should point out, Hassan and Kid Canada, both former AWL Grand Champions. Uh, he said as he rapidly looks up the records again. Kid Canada was the 17th Grand Champion, one successful title defense. Hassan, on the other hand, was the third Grand Champion. First, saw the first wrestler to successfully cash in the Intercontinental Championship, incidentally. Also the first ever Intercontinental Champion. Funny how that works. And a tag made within the fist stable for that jerk Tony Deppen. A flying knee takes out the much larger... Though to be fair, I think Jungle Boy is bigger than this guy. Crossbody. Crossbody block by the most Canadian man in the world. He has maple syrup in his veins, and he craps poutine. He's the most Canadian man in the world, and he just took a very American knee right to the mush. Oh no, but tie up, and somehow Deppin comes out, and Deppin again with these deadly strikes. I think I'm seeing his function within the fist unit. The suplex lets him think about it. An homage to Davy Boy Smith, who was not Canadian, but was close enough for, for Kid Canada. Tag made to the Shining Legacy, second generation professional wrestler, El Hio del Magico. Whoop, 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 up and down. Attempted the arm breaker. As many arm drags as you see in Lucha Libre, that's actually a pretty good strategy. I will give credit where it is due. 
And here comes the grand champion. Drop toe hold. Oh, into a double stomp. And a no, oh, and a knee strike out of nowhere. The eight man Atomicos match, a staple of the Chikara wrestling style. So, of course, all four of these Chikara veterans know what they're doing. And actually, at this point, I'd call Travis Hawk to be a veteran. Maybe not that jerk, Tony Deppin. The shining legacy, El Kio del Magiku, the son of Magiku, now known as M05 in the Dre Corps. Perhaps it is by teaming up with this international association that the shining legacy, El Kio del Magiku, will finally find a way to free his father. I don't know. That's got to be his motivation going into this. And Dasher aiming for the outfield. Baseball slide, of course. Count outs in effect. 20 count on the outside. The rules the same in the AWL as they are in Chikara, interestingly enough. Though unlike Chikara, Lucha Tag rules do not apply. Mainly because there's no way to do them in this game. I wish there were. Uh-oh, fastball special. Winding it up. Bam! Knockout blow. The referee can call for a TKO if he chooses. All we have now, not exactly the Chikara special, but close enough for government work. Nine minutes and change, and oh, breaks the grip. Does El Gio Del Magico saving himself and possibly his team. If I was El Hilda Majka right now, I'd be thinking about a, about a tag. Maybe if I were Dasher as well. Interesting. Third time in the match, I think we've seen that sit-out powerbomb. And now, what is he thinking? Thinking endless light, possibly. But no, denied by the grand champion of Chikara. He's going for the suicide squeeze. He's been taking his Cena pills. Down goes El Hio Del Magico. One broken up by Kid Canada. Good teamwork by Sekai Gun in their first outing. And I believe this is also the first outing for this specific quartet on the Chikara side. But of course, the Fist Trio not only effective. They're set to the trios this year. Into the cover. One, two, three, and that's it. Travis Huckabee with an assist from Dasher Hatfield beats the second generation competitor. And that knee, that was the beginning of the end. The fastball special did not help, nor did the suicide squeeze. That final assisted flying lariat in the corner. Here are your winners, Dasha Hutfield, Icarus, Tony Zeppelin, and Travis Huckabee. Something tells me this is not over. Right now we move on to the tag team division where just like Chikara, we've got a three point system and two teams with two points. That makes this a de facto number one contenders match. The following contest is your semi final match scheduled for one in the tag team division. Introducing first, the tag team combination of Frederick Victor and the reigning 
For the record, Frederick Victor and Big Jerry, I'll let you figure out which is which, are the were the 20th AWL World's Tag Team Champions. They won those titles at AWL 209, lost them at AWL 220 to the team of Hassan and Kid Canada. That means they have not held those tag team titles in over two years at this point. Just past AWL 280. And for the record, our current champions, the Spirit Pack, are the 27th tag team champions of the Animated Wrestling League. Here come the Tigers in full force. And their opponents introducing first, being accompanied by Spring Tiger and Shido Zadon. Fighting out of the unified school of the Tiger style, Tiger Moss 2. Only Tiger Mask 2 in the gold and black will be Competing in this contest, Spring Tiger and Taika Zadaku here for moral support. However, this duo, former tag team champions themselves, they were the 22nd tag team champions. But right now, we happily welcome a special guest from the top of the industry. And his partner! Taking his foot in the ring, from IG Prefecture, Japan, he is the leader of chaos, representing the old professor, he is the reigning IWGP Heavy Fuser, Rainmaker, Old Mother, Star. Together, they also have two points. The Rainmaker, Okada Kazuchika, no stranger to the Animated Wrestling League, has a career record of 15 and 10 here in the AWL, and he was also the fourth Animated Wrestling League Grand Champion. Won that title at AWL 180, lost it at 185 to Gamba, after two successful title defenses. He was the first man to ever hold the AWL and IWGP Championships simultaneously. If he wins this match, he will have the opportunity to win the World's Tag Team title as well. And there you see it, the proof that he is the best wrestler in the world today. Yeah, we're the AWL, we know what we are. And it's going to be the big man versus the tiger to start us off. 15 minutes on the clock, standard time limit for non-title tag team action. So semi-final match of the evening, Hurricane Rana from the, from the form, <laughs> sorry, from the former champion to the former champion. That doesn't tell you anything, does it? From the tiger to the giant. And the early flurry of offense in the favor of Tiger Mask and Okada. These two had teamed back during the days of our war with Global Wrestling Monopoly. They've had two points sitting on the shelf for over a year now. And it was a big get to the AWL Commission. We've had some unfortunate relations with New Japan over the years. It was a big get to get Okada here. So a lot of ring rust, tag team, continuity ring rust. These two have not had, I mean Tiger and Okada, have not had a tag team match with each other in over a calendar year. 
14 minutes on the clock. Hip attack right into the corner. Oh, and the big kick does not take the big man down. Side British leg sweep on the Blackpool native. Uh, miss with a spin kick. Tiger not entirely sure where he is right now. Possibly his mask is obscured. Oh, headbutt. The mask will offer little to no protection in that situation. And notice how Big Jerry is using the, his body to stay between Tiger Mask and Okada. He does not want to allow a tag here. Flurry of kicks by the former Global Wrestling Monopoly World Heavyweight Champion. Trash talk in the neutral corner. But Tiger takes advantage. Can he get him up? Tiger Breaker! How the heck did he get him up for that? One, two, and a kick out. Over the top rope, down to the floor, like a super heavyweight sack of potatoes. Now I should point out in the AWL that points can be won via pinfall, submission, countout, disqualification, or knockout. So if one of these two gets back in the ring before the 20 count and the other one doesn't, that team will challenge for the tag team titles. It looks like right now, AWL 281 is going to be a Knight of Champions, assuming we have a winner in this match. If we have anything other than a time limit draw, we're gonna have three title matches all the men's titles defended on AWL 281, the season 15 premiere. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for spending some of your Obon week here in the Animated Wrestling League. Please like, share, subscribe, enable notifications. Try to get the word out about the Animated Wrestling League. Powerbomb into the submission attempt here, but that's not gonna work on the outside. Big Jerry knows that. He's a former tag team champion. And he is the reigning British heavyweight, sorry, British openweight champion. And that's another factor to consider in this match. And good strategy by Big Jerry rolling in and out of the ring. That resets the referee's count. Senior official Joey Baba Ganoush of the famous Baba Ganoush wrestling family not horribly happy about that. But he knows the rules and he will follow them. And finally the Tiger fights back. Spring Tiger, Tiger the Dark, and Okada watch on, relatively helpless. They know they cannot risk the disqualification for their team. And Okada putting good trust into his partner. Assuming his partner will get back to the ring, and he does diving tag! And here we go, in comes the Rainmaker! A simple lariat to the big man. And it is certainly possible if Okada were to pin Big Jerry, who tries to break the momentum of the little classic AWL cat and mouse. Big vertical suplex, down. If Okada were to pin a British openweight champion, that could give him an opportunity for a title match. Oh, German! And is he gonna transfer? Yes, wrist control, Rainmaker! One, two, the breakup not effective. And that's it, ladies and gentlemen. The referee says that the shoulders did not come up. The press did not break. When Frederick Victor tried to interfere, he did not have what it took. Big Jerry doing all the work in this match. Frederick Victor, I don't believe was ever actually legal in the contest. But here you go, he saw to was a rainmaker! And watch the shoulders of Big Jerry. One, two, they don't come up at all. That's a valid hit. Here the winners now with three points. I got those two. And the rainmaker, Okada, Kazuchika. Ladies and gentlemen, Okada. Tiger, Shenron, Airwolf. That's going to be one hell of a tag team championship match. But speaking of championships, right now, 
It's friend versus friend for the gold. This will be the third time Dragonus has challenged for the Joshi Championship. Can she put it together? Let's make this official. The following contest is your main event of the evening. Scheduled for one fall, one submission or a knockout to decide the winner. And it is for the Animated Wrestling League, Joshi Championship. And that music echoes throughout the AWL arena and you may be thinking, wait a minute, why is the champion coming out first? She isn't. That is one half of the AWL Joshi Tag Team Championship that Dragonus shares with her opponent tonight, Akira Marine. That's right, the Joshi Tag Team Champions are gonna face each other for the Joshi Singles title as this second generation dragon enters the AWL ring. A place that is quite frankly her birthright. But ever since last year's Golden War, Last May, nobody has had the answer for this woman. The mistress of a thousand holes, the submission expert, the Joshi champion, one half of the Joshi tag team champions as well, the undefeated 21-0 Akira Merine. If you recognize that song, you will recognize her trainer and mentor who bequeathed her the title of Mistress of a Thousand Holds. Kayfabe! But Akira Merine, the best female wrestler in the world today, undefeated in single or tag team action. I don't think she won the first ever Joshi ladder match in the animated wrestling league. This is the second generation star versus the seemingly unstoppable submissions expert. And it's all for that. The Joshi Championship, our title main event. Introducing first the challenger, fighting out of Chiba Prefecture, Japan. The daughter of the dragon, Doragoness. And her opponent, she is the reigning and defending AWL Joshi Champion. Tonight, making her ninth title defense, the undefeated Mistress of a Thousand Holds, Akira Marine. This is an officially sanctioned Animated Wrestling League Joshi Championship match under the auspices of the Animated Wrestling League, AWL Commissioner presiding. At the sound of the bell, AWL Senior Official, Joey Bobadouche, in charge. You heard that right, ladies and gentlemen, the ninth title defense. Eight times, Akira Merene has proven herself worthy of remaining Joshi Champion. 30 minutes on the clock. We have extended time limits for title matches in the AWL in order to avoid or minimize the chance of a time limit draw. Oh, interesting takedown and oh, kick right to the breadbasket by the champion. Color and elbow tie up. These two know each other very well. They're tag team partners. Twice before tonight, Dragonus has challenged for the championship. Dragonus, other than the undefeated Akira Merine, Dragonus has more victories, a better win-loss ratio than anybody else. 20 and four going into this evening. Two of those losses at the hands of the champion. Ratio of plus 16, by the way. Of course, Akira Merine, 21 and 0. Perfect record, 21. One minute in, the queen gonna fly, going up, down. Misses with the double stomp, Dragonus with the Veteran instincts belying her age, able to get out of the way very quickly. That's the uh, the almost un almost indescribable advantage that second generation wrestlers have. They grew up in the ring, they grew up in the business, and they understand things that are well beyond their years. And now Dragonus lifting her opponent up, thinking thinking vertical suplex, and she nails it. This is going to be submission versus powerhouse. Dragon is, of course, equipped with moves bequeathed to her by her father. The Dragon Drop 1, Dragon Drop 2, Dragon Drop 3. Her own variation of the Dragonist Sleeper, of course. 
And Akira Medine has her thousand submission holds. And of course, her, 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 oh, spear, and apparently a spear. Is that one of the thousand? I don't think so. Two minutes. She does yes, no, an arm bar. Oh, a lead arm drag. Almost a Lucha Libre inspired offense. Rolls through into the Boston Crab. Simple but effective. One of the first submission holds you're taught in wrestling school. And I've seen her finish people off with this, but Dragon is able to roll back to her stomach, at which point there's no pressure on the quadricep muscles or the lower back whatsoever. And a nice takedown, just judo throw. And, uh, was, was Dragon a judoka as a, as a kid? I don't know. I have to ask her about that. Trying to work the arm. Possible as a setup for the Dragonus sleeper. Right hand. Referee going to give a little bit of leeway on the, on the closed fists here in a championship match. DDT suplex. And interesting, haven't seen a lot of submission attempts by the champion. Maybe trying to surprise the opponent who knows her better than anybody else. Oh! Hurricane Rana reversed into a face buster. Or a face plant right into that black canvas. Rolling through in well conditioned, well air conditioned buildings, so the canvas isn't hot or anything, so don't worry about that. No one's gonna get their skin burned off. What do we have here? Stalking her prey. Trips her up. STF! STF! A proper application to step over toe hold face lock. Does Dragonus have an answer? No, she doesn't! That's it! She's out! Three minutes and 40 seconds. Akira Medine proves worthy of the championship yet again. I don't think anybody, I don't think anybody realizes it was over quite that easy. Good throw there by Dragonus, not wasting any opportunity. We should only get a one count there. But right here, look at how much he torques that leg and the torso in addition to the face lock. Dragonus really didn't have anywhere to go. Miles away from the road. Here is the winner! And still! On the Midden Wrestling League, Yoshi Champion! Our hero! One year and three months plus. He has been your Joshi champion once again with the fires of the Daimonji burning bright in the sky. She proves herself the champion of champions. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. This has been the Animated Wrestling League Summer Supercard. Oh, Bonanza 2019. We will see you very, very soon for the official start of season 15. Three titles will be on the line. But for now, Korede, Kimari Dan.